So what's new? Show 339. Tie one on. Sorry. One on. No, I'm not suggesting we get drunk. But the price of men's ties today could make you need a whiff of brandy. Let's learn to make them instead. It sure beats a hangover, and it's fun. So, what's new? Starring George W. Trippon. We'll first go to the table, and I'll explain how we cut the tie. Beautiful, beautiful fabric, this. It's called a syrah. It's a silk. And you notice our pieces of pattern have been laid down on the fabric. And we're going to be cutting the ties on the bias. Now, it's a very lovely, lovely pattern we have here because normally if we lay the fabric at a 45 degree angle here, we have the bias. And they so designed this stripe on the bias so that the tie will tie beautifully. Then you learn a couple of little tricks on how we stitch the tie. So actually, so long as we have a stripe here, fine. If you don't have a stripe, we do have a grain line, which is the bias. And we would measure the same distance from the outside edge to this point and from the outside edge to that point. And of course, we'll need some pins because we do pin. Also, another thing on these very slippery, slidey fabrics, we have put our newspaper under. Remember our newspaper? Thank you. I'm glad you do. Now, look. Let's lay this tie here. This, of course, is parallel to that. Notice that where we seam the tie, because this seams to this seam here, it's on the straight. So if we even keep that line on the straight here, which is a selvage, and then bring the tie up this way, we automatically have the bias. But I'd like to have the stripe right smack dab. You may not be able to see the stripe, but I can. I'll have it smack dab in the middle of the tie. Get in there, you. Stab, lift, push. Good. I guess I have to say it every time. Stab, lift, push. Follow the stripe. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, it's important to pin each end, each corner, and it's not necessary to pin the paper underneath, but when we do cut, we will be cutting with the paper. I mean, we'll be cutting with scissors, naturally, but we'll be cutting with the paper underneath, really. Yes, be specific, my mother always said. So I'm specific. All right, this can lie right down in here. And of course, you can see we can make a half a dozen ties, and after you see this tie today, You'll be amazed at how quickly you can make them out of some of the most gorgeous fabrics. Now, I'm taking that right on that stripe. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Oh, you have to say gorgeous yourself, you know, nobody else will. But wait till you see this tie. Notice how I pin, please. Spill the pins, stab, lift, push. Stab, lift, push. Stab, lift, push. Now, of course, these look like arrows shooting that away. And, of course, these are the facings, which will finish the end of the tie. So that will be put over on the lining section here. And once again, we have our arrow here, which is parallel to this section. You can, once again, measure from the outside edge here. Hold your finger there, measure from here, then pivot one way or the other so that that grain line is on the true line with the selvage, which is the outside edge. And you know selvage is spelled S-E-L. Selvage, S-E-L, E-V-G. Selvage, E-D-G-E. And it's put there to keep the fabric from raveling. Okay, now, we are here and here. Now, I judge this with my eye here. No. Bad eye, George. <laughs> really. Look at what you're doing. Don't do what you're looking at. All right. The scissors. The paper. Cut. Now, again, I repeat. It's so much easier to cut with the paper. And you'll cut a smoother line if you always watch the point of your shears. Keep the point of your shears and continue cutting. 
when you get to that point, notice, I move this out of my way, lift it, turn it, come here, put in my bit of a notch here, continue cutting all the way there, come this way. Now, I would never cut this way, so I'm going to block this out. This is why we lay paper under this, to help us rotate this around. I'll also be blocking out this section here, and I'll be blocking out this section here. Oh, come on, paper. There, 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 there. Now, see, by blocking out the sections here with the paper under it, I can get rid of what I don't need now. Out, 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 out. Then I can turn this any which way without disturbing the ply or the layer of fabric we have. I repeat, we use the tip of the shear, cut all the way here, cut on around, take your time with the cutting, unless you're in a hurry, and then hurry up. But if you watch the point of your shears, and notice if you cut on paper, it makes it so easy. Of course, you can also cut on the floor, you know, if you like. Now I'll be continuing cutting and I'll be right back, so don't go away, please. Our tie together, we have here our facing, which I'll pin and set aside for the moment because we're going to have to piece our tie at the back here. Now notice we have both edges on the selvage and I've matched a notch. And I take quarter in seams and I pin where the stitching takes place. So we set it here under the machine. Turn the machine on. Plant the needle, please, please. Hold the thread so it doesn't disappear on you. There you go. Now, all over again, plant the needle, talk to yourself, down. Hang on and stitch across there. I've got quarter inch seams and I've matched where the stitching takes place so that when my tie, feed dog up, thank you, is together and we unfold this, it is a continuous line. Then of course we would be pressing this. Press, 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 press. Press, 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 press. There. Now this is the right side of the tie because the seam is on the inside there. Now I take my little facings here and I lay one here first and I have it all marked. Notice it's all been marked. The corner here at the tip of the front of the tie has been marked. Pinnez-vous là, okay? And then pin it over here too at this other corner right there. And then we'll be pinning at this corner. Now this is all bias, so one could stretch unstretch it, make it stay where it's supposed to, corner to corner, right here. It comes into a dot here. I hope you see the dot, dot. Oh. No pinning yourself, please, thank you. And then the other corner. Now I'm a firm believer in pinning, also on slippery fabrics like this. Some of you beginners might even baste it a bit, but you should practice, you know, First practice on somebody you don't like. Doesn't come out right. No, no harm done. Then pin midway so you can control this because it's all bias. We also will be pinning the other one also on the right side, please. So talk to yourself. Right side, right side, right side. The right side is up. That's the right side up. Good. And then this is the right side of the lining. All the linings don't really have right sides and wrong sides. Ties. Oh my. I have friends in Hawaii who make ties out of the most gorgeous brocades and damask and they jewel them. Would you believe 75 to 125 bucks each? Oh, King's Ransom. Exquisite ties. Ties. Did you hear that little speech I made a while ago? Tie one on. <laughs> First time I tied one on was accidentally, naturally, when I was a child of seven. In Aurora, Illinois, my dad used to make his own wine. So in the tub they throw me, the, the bathtub first, and wash us good, my sister Florence and I. And then we'd get in this big barrel and we'd stomp the grape, just a stomp, a stomp, a stomp. Now look, I'm bearing the needle here, coming over to this corner here. 
lift. Bring these edges together, please, from underneath. Continue sewing at the quarter inch, please. Come to this other corner. Stop, lift. Come to the other corner. All the way to the corner. It's the inside of the tie. Stop, turn. Right here. Then the other corner here. Up to here. Up to the other corner here. Corner. Thank you. And then the other corner. Thank you. Undo. Cut. Shift. Start. Plant the needle. Take out the pin. Come to the first corner. Up with the presser foot. Up to the next corner. Well, the stomping wasn't so bad. Of course, our feet used to get awfully purple and blue and stuff. Oh, lovely. And we got paid for it, too. Well, the time came after the grapes were fermenting. I come to the top corner, which is very, very important here because I'm taking take one stitch across at the front point of the wide part of the tie. And then back up in here to this point here. Right to there. This point here. Right to there. Then up. Turn. Come down to this other corner. Turn. Unpin. Come over to here. Up. Good. Out. Trim. Clip down to that corner there, please. Thank you. Clip down to that corner. Trim as you so please. Trim, I said. That corner. And then we'll be turning this corner of the front of the tie. Each point, please. And we'll be doing with the back of the tie the same thing, like this, to get our corners out. Push your corners out like this, please. Like so. Lovely. And while I'm pushing these corners out, I'll be right back. So please don't go away. Before we tie one on, would you mind if I tie one on with a small thimble full? <laughs> From England. We've turned this. We have put in our inside interfacing, which is also cut on the bias. And we'll turn our edges here. We get our pins. And this is the important part of this. Pin this on here. And we turn this first part of the tie here, and we'll be pinning this. I'll have you pin it, please, because we'll be running a stitch along the raw edge. The wonderful thing about ties that are cut on the bias or anything on the bias, your edges do not fray. Bias edges do not fray. So I'll be pinning this all along here like this, pin, 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 pin. See what I mean about slippery fabrics? Well, the wine part, when I was helping my dad came, when he was changing one wine that had fermented to another barrel, they put a hose in it, they go, and then it starts running through, you know. Well, my job each time was to put the hose in my mouth, and he didn't tell me to put my tongue against the end of the hose, <laughs> to keep the wine while he changed the barrels around. Well, I had the hose in my mouth, and I was going, And presently, you know, I don't, gee, maybe I'm getting sick, you know. So I didn't say anything to my dad. I just went on upstairs <laughs> and went to bed. We lived in a grocery store. Our living room was right behind the store. So the rest of the day, now look, I'm coming over here, and I have already threaded my thread. And watch this. This is the important part. We give ourselves a little marker here which we bring down under here so that when we stitch this to that, we will not be stitching to the front of the tie. And just keep bringing a running stitch along that raw edge, please, of the tie. Along the tie. Now, if you need a third hand and you're working with the machine, you can bring your tie under here and lay this so that we can be pulling in this direction. And remember, 
we lay this under here so that as we stitch, we do not catch the tie. And it's just a running stitch. Now, as we run this stitch too, it's very, very important that we leave this thread hang loose here, at least an inch from here to the knot. And as we do this, we loosen our thread because the guy will be tying this and as you tie a tie, it's very biased and it gives. And you don't want to snap the threads. So that thread is put in very loosely, like you might even leave a little loop on every other thread. So that as he pulls the tie, it will automatically pull itself up in there. We, of course, lay this down in here. And if it's a bit too long, really, out, out. So that you do not so the front of the tie. Normally, you can also be using a thimble, a running stitch. Run, run, run. And then ease it out. Ease it out, please. Then take out the pin, lay this down under here, and once more, the running stitch. Run. Oh, my thread came unthreaded. No problem. I'm always ready. And just go back into that same old stitching at that point there and then continue all the way over in here. We are running the stitch. You may run the stitch, look at a couple of inches long if you like. Very good, very good. All right, come on thread, don't give me any troubles. You might run the same thing, so I'm pulling the one thread all the way out, please. Thank you. Out, out, no problem, whack it. Never make a production out of things. We need it over here because too many people make production out of things. So we're getting shorter here. So we'll come on over here. And we're getting to about the midway point here. Oh, God, mess. Trippy, get on with it. Thank you. Oh, I never made a tie sitting down. Are you standing up at the table? This is fun, though, sitting down. Oh. Well, pretty soon my dad and mother start bringing the customers in to the bedroom. So look, you look at that. That's our son. He's making wine today. <laughs> that was the only time I ever got high, except in Cheyenne, Wyoming, which is over a mile high. Did you know there, if you have one drink, it's like having 10? <laughs> oh, God. I was in the Army then. Oh, wow. World War II. How many of you remember World War II? Would you raise your hands, please? <laughs> oh, I'm so all alone. <laughs> Wasn't so long ago. Okay, I've reached the halfway mark, like so. And I'm going to end this here for the moment. Thank you. And then I will be re-threading. Oh, pardon me. Re-thread. Oh, that's the one that pulled out good. I don't need you anymore. Where were you when I needed you? I wouldn't have to thread my needle if you hadn't stuck. Oh, you need arms and elbows. And there. Hmm. Now, of course, at my age, you always get the eye. I mean, the needle with the biggest eye you can find. <laughs> Are you there? <gasps> I didn't do what I told you people always to do. Cut it at an angle, please. Give yourself a point. Thank you. Put in the needle. I usually have my people do this for me. I don't do this kind of nonsense. I haven't got time for this kind of nonsense. Now, normally we wax this too. We take a piece of wax and wax the thread. Then it won't stick. Now, watch this one, please. We're doing this with a single thread, and I'm going to start at the other end and work halfway up. But you'll actually see how we finish at least one end of the tie here at this point. That's an awful lot of tie there. So look, please. We'll be turning this under right here. And normally you baste it, but I'll be pinning it. This is the other side of the tie, which I'll be turning and basting normally. You can also pin it like this for yourselves when you become professional, because I am pin basting back a quarter of an inch, all the way like this. Isn't that gorgeous? About every couple inches. They should be like little soldiers. Notice how every pin is put in exactly the same. One isn't deeper with just the tip of the pin right to there. 
Then we continue here and here, right to there, then there and over to here. Oh my, the good old days. The good old days. I know when I travel around through Europe, they have places that tie one on, let me tell you. In France, I remember one year the president decreed that everybody should drink milk. <laughs> That's the funniest thing he ever said. Because the French do not drink milk. We drink milk. All right, now look. I've pinned that along there to that point. And then we bring this right on over to this section here, making sure our tie is even here. And we'll be pinning then along this end. And notice that long thread that we had here? Notice some of your better ties that your husband wears, or you guys wear. And you notice there's always that in there, and it's always buried underneath there, so don't worry about it. And then we come here, and we pin here, and we pin along here very beautifully. Also, remember, when you press this tie, we don't press this way. We press it on the grain line, which would be in the direction opposite from which it was cut. <laughs> so look at your pattern. All right, when we finish this part here, you see your tie is starting to take shape beautifully. So when we do this, we do what we call a blind stitch, please. We start in here, right there, and go into the fold and come out into the fold. And then bring your thread right back from the fold where it came underneath here, go forward and go back into the fold. That is called a blind stitch. And catch only the tie, and I'll be right back. Please don't go away. We'll finish this tie, and you'll wind up with something like this. Just absolutely gorgeous. Chow now. If you followed my instructions and those of the paper, you will come out with something as beautiful as this. <gasps> Do it.